And I just said that. Yeah, she serves in our outcome. She's both of her and I go down. Hi, Greg. Four Country Spirits is here. Okay, can I come to your room? Or say it's not, sorry. Good morning. Yeah. Okay. They are now. They are now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They are. They are. They are. Okay. All right, first item on the agenda is to approve the minutes of the comprehensive plan of life May 1st, 2022. Unfortunately, they are not in our packet, and our current system for protection is not running. So I don't know if y'all have been able to review them since then. Uh, and they are not in the packet online. Do that another time. I'll have to do it next time. The work that needs to be done um, for the DMV uh, to get the plan implemented and then get the plan uh, turned over technically to the Planning and Planning Commission and have a schedule for implementation as well as those requests and benchmarks that they can review readily. Uh, we have spent quite a bit of time with the narrative and I think we are well uh, ahead in that area. So, if you read in the part of the principles of implementation, they basically, again, have to push the prepared part to be there. The children need, there are partnerships that get involved and that we need to recognize and get part of the group. Each one of you has to take a push. We want to be the next thing we're going to talk about the time. That's the very first thing. So when we have the best perspective, one of the things that needs to be done is who is part of it. If it's, um, you know, part of the group, if, when we look at the areas of uh, the Wimberley Valley, are we going to create a particular entity and work with the city of the city, for example, for the others in the valley? To what we observe is that conservation, preservation, and management projects in the valley. So who are the partners? And the plan is partnership here. We need to have an active plan for implementation, and then that would be where the partners have involved in creating trust in a future organization. So 
That's part of the thing. That's what I'm there for. Balancing needs with resources. The staff is very critical. In some cases, the wishes of our citizens are going to exceed the resources of the We have recently had quite a bit of discussion about city control for the city. Those who like the same thing, so. Uh, it's necessary that we work on implementation in relation to both and objectives. We have to adjust the expectations and also set unrealistic questions. Questions to ask is what is the priority for the plan? First of all, the vision, the citizens, and the consequences. Like, uh, what do the citizens want from the There is a period of speech, mobility, and uh, we have to have channels of communication with the citizens and with our with the group of city implementation and make sure they understand that our implementation, their wishes, may not be. Fiscal responsibility. Okay. The goals and objectives, we have a group that is that I've been working on this year. And we are looking at what is the financial condition of the city? Well, if we are a residential city, our, our revenues arise primarily from at the lower taxes, from property taxes. We have all received uh, places, and there is a general sense of despair of city among citizens, not just in this city, but throughout the country. We can talk about maybe the reality is not as bad as soon as things that can be done. But that's not so important. So one of the things too that when we talk about implementation and when we talk about those objectives, and that's going to be more the responsibility of this year, is what other sources of funding may be available to us. Yeah. We have not been very aggressive as a city. And in the past week or so, I guess because if you can look, look at that on the computer, on the internet, and they are done available through the, through the Biden administration efforts, they are just there. That's reliable, they are still in that way. So, and then, but always when we look at a goal and objective, we have to have the number. I would say something like twenty dollars guidance. What is that primary guidance? Whatever we put, we, we, we recommend, we need to say what we're using that is from the revenue and it should be sourced in significant public benefit to the entire city of Jamaica. That should be our guiding force. What does this be? Who does it benefit and does it benefit the entire city? The next thing that we looked at is um, as I like to have you up here. I like to have you up in front. Is this is an example of space and what's in there is when you do focus implementation, you should have the on the table or the general you should have a list of what is the benchmark. That is, what is the vision to achieve? What is the benchmark? What is it like to me? And I use the hypothetical term. The benchmark to be the benefit of the payroll debt. What is the baseline? The, the baseline is that we have X number of miles that, that meet that base that pay the payroll. What is the current status? Which is the color that we will pay as employees? What is the target metro? Hypothetically, we repair police that remain for eight four five miles because it's not to be consecutive. That should be completed by the same time. And again, it should be realistic. If you look at the vision 2031, it says we're going to repair the first to first by 2026, we're going to repair the first by 2030, and we have repaired every place to first. It's not the best plan. There's always the responsibility of sharing on something. 
that what we are doing here is to put in terms of that. When they were a bit of the time, their response to the administration at the time was we need help to the natural resources to be but once it comes to implementation and it's approved by when it's once approved by council, it is their primary responsibility. And of course in coordination with the city council. So they are responsible for reviewing the schedule. We should protect them when we do the implementation. They should be at least in my this is what I have seen it on the every quarter. Four times a year, they look at the implementation to try to determine where they are. Again, some cities do it every six months, some cities do it once a year. Once a quarter is a little bit intense, but it also gives you, it gives you the opportunity to look at where you may be behind and take some proactive action. They need to work with parties that have enough some information that we can assist, that they could to assist. We would have to, if I'm not doing it already, we have to identify parties that would be responsible for implementation. Is it the city? Is it part from the creation? Is it, who is it? And then uh, they, it is anticipated that they will report to the city council again on a quarterly basis. And they will make recommendations if there is a state and changes or if they have found some critical issues that may prevent progress in that state. We talked a little bit about funding, and I'm not going to go into detail. When you work with your goals and objectives, you're going to have to estimate, and you're going to have to say, okay, this is what we're going to do. And this is how long it's going to take. We think this is a fair time. And I say we think this is an estimate. But it should be an estimate based on reason and some facts. Uh, we have income from franchise agreements, fees, our sales tax revenue is very limited. And within 10 minutes, we have very few opportunities for commercial development. Now, the extraterritorial system in that part of the field is an area that is really difficult to develop. And it has the capacity, and I'm saying capacity, for sales staff. If, if, let's say that we have a retail enterprise that buys property on the BTC, and they're going to generate if they have not, if they are on the industry, we do not receive it. I must say, Anna, as part of the building yeah, agreement, so that's what we do. So they are, you know, we do produce them carefully because they. They just lay through a stock in the house. Today, they're having the first step to stop the cost of the lease. So, they may be. So, there are things that conversations that you can have with those entities to keep them without soliciting them, because they're not supposed to solicit in the station, without soliciting them to seek them. To seek their indication to the city. So let me finish that and then I'll let you. I want you to talk about it. There are some additional funding opportunities that may, have, may be available. Uh, I do pass through. These are some of the things that, when you're looking at your goals and objectives, and you look at how could this be funded, and that can be in discussion with uh, the official work group, where can be some opportunities? Just this week, I have been working with another council member on the grants. The U.S. Department of Transportation is accepting grants for infrastructure and safety programs for rural community 
road from the street. So there are some other funding opportunities. So it is part of our job to present what we want, to present what we want to achieve, but also present some options for funding. Now, I'd like you to take a few minutes to introduce, I think you all know him, I've been here before. So he's talking tonight about, you know, specifically the EPJ. Yeah. I'm ready to take him. I'm to the committee. Nice to be here. Nice to see y'all. I'm Brandon Land. I'm the head of the Safety Associates. And yeah, always excited to talk about the creativity of the system and the opportunities that lie out there. Oh. So I'll tell you right off the bat that the committee. That, that is a scenario that is probably the most difficult for people to do. And it really comes down to the risk of having to propose the regular development of the investment process. Um, the process that is not so difficult for the whole system. There are requirements that the private legislators who apply and not theirs, because uh, that way when things come back in, Question out there, or I would say, that or more. Um, and so, when somebody wants to develop out there, there's a certain way that they're going to want to do it, which is they need their bottom dollar. So, when you have regulations that control trees, drainage, and you have to struggle for you know, how things develop on the slope, when you have regulations, when you have signs, when you have you know, regulations that basically this is the quality that we expect. And when those developers going out there you break on and you play ball. And and that's a mechanism that you play ball with is called the development agreement. And and that is development agreements are going to be y'all's greatest tool as a city moving forward with development that gets proposed out in the DJ. It's a little bit easier with residential development because these days are a lot larger, there's always a fire power. Developers are always going to want breaks. They're going to want breaks on the street. They're going to want breaks on environmental features. And so they're going to have no choice but to come in and ask you to do it. They want to develop in your EPJ. They need to be ready for that. So it's that way through the development agreement. You're going to say, all right, you want to play ball? You're going to come into the city. And we're going to get you back there. And so I guess two words development agreement and strong subdivision measures. That's what we need right now. Can we dive into your? What you're talking about with development agreements a little bit more because um, are you talking about the the plotting and subdivision process as a development agreement? Or are you talking about an actual like contractual agreement where you have um, concessions sort of outlined on paper and both parties essentially agree to them? And I understand that with like a PBD that exists, but are these development agreements um, existing with any kind of development? And what you know, can you define that term a little bit more? Development agreements are potentially just between these kinds of things. Okay. Um, development agreements can't say, here's what the zone is, but it can contemplate things, right? They can just take into their land and use it. Right. So it just depends on the type of land. Like if it's a big, massive type of land, you know, mm -hmm. you know knocking on your door, and you know, hopefully they're not knocking on your door. But, you know, you can, you know, they're going to need to take some stuff. And so that's usually the process. Okay, we just came to the East Texas. At the end of the day, you know, they've got a bottom dollar they're using the bank. And, you know, they're. Mm -hmm. you know, that, yeah, that's. Mm -hmm. and, and so the development agreement is a mechanism mm -hmm. to accommodate their development, which is really what it is. Is it right. a good, good business venture, a good quality venture, or is it something that actually complements? Any time, I, I can't imagine a scenario where you do a development agreement and, and, and you're not and you're not proposing the thing. Yeah, I have some community that do that. You know, and so on. So that that's your mechanism. So you're, it's basically um, the process of discussion between our city manager and the developer that occurs 
in between when plans are presented to city council and council your PC. Well, you know, it, and I say a good process for, you know, for two city managers is to coordinate policy and you know, mm -hmm. development in the project zone, you know, mm -hmm. still have a council of public the things that I want to mention is that for consideration of the comprehensive plan and that would be is that some cities have some cities have created economic development parks. And that would be if you were if you were to create spots, they could participate. They could be a very active part. And now when you talk about chess game, I don't know how to play chess. But I do but know that I do know that a negotiation, I do know negotiation, I believe in the concept of winning games. So one of the things that we need to think about, and first of all, I, I think a lot of people have said we could go to meet an economic development corporation because of the residential. Well, I think it is because of the ECJ. And I have seen some cities and they would be very ambitious in their pursuit of economic opportunity. And one of the things that we need to say, if you get um, an entity that preferably a um, type of business that does not impact the environment, but has retail stores mm -hmm. that depend on the city, when you sit down to negotiate with PVD, they're going to ask for concessions. And one of the concessions I have seen in other cities is, okay, we do abate our taxes, our property taxes for X number of years or more. And I feel they, that's where the negotiation of what is the benefit, what is the income that we're going to receive from those property taxes versus what is the income that we would receive from sales taxes if that corporation Right. Oh, absolutely. I, I, you know, to be frank, I'm pretty cynical about what most cities call economic development. You know, a lot of times, okay, let's, let's just, you know, uh, let's waive all the taxes, you know, because we're getting jobs. And then people love to find out. 100 jobs in here, economic development. Okay, well, it's not economic development until you figure out where those people are living and shopping. They're not shopping in these cities, and they're not living in these cities. It's not economic development. You just receive the business that is providing no revenue for the city. So, to that respect, I bring up a point. I don't have a great answer for it other than every time somebody walks in the store and says, I'll come to your community. I'm looking at Cuda. I'm looking at Wimberley. I'm looking at this place, and I'm going to go where people give me the greatest rate. Okay. Well, we're going to have to look and look at this in the business perspective. You know, that's that's, when somebody comes in wanting tax breaks, that's not a situation. You know, so it may be a good thing, but you really have to sit down and think about it. You know, I have a really great time in the first one. And I'll see what truly are the revenues. No, don't say it's going to provide more taxes for the school district. What does it really do for the city? What does it specifically do for the city? How much additional revenue does it bring in? What is the payback for the city in terms of what it – you have to look at it like a business in that What's your spend? What's your revenue? What are you? What's your cost of so Sometimes it's a good thing, but a lot of times what what we call it is not a Frankly, it's the same in the name of things. It's good. You know, a lot of these economic development corporations do that. People want a payroll, so we're trying to make it look like they're recruiting them. But if you've got a new business, what is it? 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 All right, this is a work group, and I believe work with everybody has to do. So this is an opportunity, and I can see Jerry coming up, so we have one of the number of 
what you have heard so far, I would like to get a sense from the three of you today, what you heard about, because this is your work in the next few months, the principles of implementation, and this is not so much an impressive now. But, but from you, what you have heard, what is, what is your thoughts, opinions, right now? And this was what uh, I'm supposing. Is uh, well, I'm hoping that you know we have had already in the past. We have had there was a very there was an effort in what they call the one to one balance one, and it is there's a lot of things that we share. For example, conservation, water conservation, environment. So I'm looking at yes, you you the city of Gwendolyn, the um, Hayes County, there might be some large um, property owners that we want to involve, that we all need, we should need regularly, and make sure that our goals and objectives don't conflict with each other. We do not want conflict in our goals and objectives. And that is something that if you identify with partnership, if you're going to do development on the ECJ, City of Wimbledon is going to be interested. Some of their resources, you know, they we don't own the county. You know, we don't own the roads. Some of the roads that are in the EGJ, we need to make sure that all of those partners that there's not going to be an obstacle to money. That's what I'm saying. And it can be from establishing representatives. Um, sample is a very successful uh, sample. Of community coming together and transfer for transportation. So, and it's multiple communities. So, we could do something for it. Jerry, will you pull your, your microphone closer to you? Everybody, try to be within a couple inches from the microphone. It's really uncomfortable, but. Um, people are saying they can not hear as well and that it's fuzzy, so just try to get close to the mic. Make it your phone. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. Bill, um, I re- I'm going to put you on the spot. I remember when we had a meeting, an interview, and um, it was about serving um, the mayor at the time and I met with you and he was about serving an uh, interim capacity in a position in the city. And one of the things that impressed me, uh, thank you, was the presentation that you made about how one of our greatest resources, the golf course, could benefit the community in general. So I would like to see the views of the, that's a partner for us. So if we would Tell me what you feel about what we said today, plus your ideas on the leadership. Well, I I view what's going on with the golf course as um, great benefit, possible benefit to the city in several ways. Um, I know that I, I'm not that familiar with exactly where we stand on the transfer of ownership. I know papers have been signed. Uh, I don't know if it's closed. I think closing has been scheduled for August. When I hear rumblings about, well, it's already happened. Um, and I've heard rumblings that the new owner has some fairly significant plans for the development of the golf course, which can generate not only revenue, but depending on, on what the owner has in mind, but also to build some things that the citizens want, the community swimming to it. Um, so, and, and I haven't heard really much talk about how we're going to interact or, or what 
the position of the city council is in, in the negotiations or the position of the city council in terms of development of the golf course. I know that we have had talk about we're not interested in development. We don't want development in the city and these kinds of things. So I'm, I'm really curious about where we stand on that. Uh, what kind of is the reaction that the new owner is going to get from the council? Um, and I don't know what our position in terms of long-range comprehensive planning would, would be in terms of us interacting in some capacity to find out exactly what the plans are and how they would affect what we're trying to do. I, I think that what happens there affects those folks in the national systems as well as our fiscal system because if I hear uh, what you hear and, um, you know, um, if it could be, I think that based on what is, what is being said, I agree with you that we can be good for the city. But one of the things that I will say is, is I have lived in on the second fairway for 36 years now. And I understand the challenges of living on the Gulf Coast, and I don't mind. And most of our citizens do. And I think that most of our citizens who came across on the, on the survey, they want the Gulf Coast to continue to be successful. It is <clears throat> council. I have been in council now for I'm on my first term, and I think that we have made great strides in the relationship with the Gulf Coast that is not possible. At one time, it wasn't. But I think that the um, council, future council, can do better work. I think the future council has to do that it was a partnership that can be done. Okay. Well, Diane, you've been on vacation, so you are rested, so we expect <laughs> great wisdom. Can, can you hear me? I can, can you hear me through the... I don't know if it's on. <laughs> well, I, since I've been gone, I, uh, I really don't know who to get started with. But I guess I feel like, I think that we had talked about me being uh, part of the physical system. And I actually volunteered to be on the traffic calming focus group. So I feel like that my role has like been brought up a higher level than what I had expected. So I need to know who else is going to work with me in there because I it's the whole problem channel. Okay. All of that people up here with me. Mm -hmm. So in theory, your goal would be just to bring this up to and Aurora is the liaison for that family as well. So y'all would kind of be the microcosm on this board to facilitate that communication um, because they will actually be doing kind of the job of that person. It is the entire point of that panel to do that. Right. I guess, see, that's the thing. I, I wasn't ever really sure. I started hearing about um, the platinum panel. And then I saw in the minutes that like I was put on it. And I'm sure me not being in the yeah. meetings probably didn't help my so much. No, you're you're not on the panel. You're just from yeah. the our our group connection to to that work so you can help us sort of gather that information up that they're, they're developing and then you know, when our little focus group meets, you can kind of put a group out on the a role. Yeah. And, and if I may, um, you know, I sent a, an email to the mayor yesterday, and I'm sure he's going to be ready. <laughs> and I sent it to, uh, and I copied the person in the signs. And it's probably my, uh, I'm a very driven person. And what I was talking about is getting this black and tennis together yesterday. 
and I said, and because um, you're, you know, you, all of, everybody's invited, there would be open women. But that's one of the things that I like put on my email, that one of the my sense of urgency is because of the relevancy to the comprehensive plan. And getting them up free, we've done a lot of work in the past that they've been. So I, uh, I've already, I'm, I'm ready to, I don't want my role as a council liaison is not to run their show, but it's to facilitate them to, to do whatever I can to make them successful. And the financials, and I hope they can get it very quickly so that they can interact with us. And hopefully, very much like what I would like to recommend, um, very much like we did with parks, and by the way, um, Pat is not here. That's the reason he's not here. But knowing him and his watching, he's very conscientious. That we have a representative from planning and zoning, and we have a representative from park relations with the group. We get uh, somebody from the uh, Blackman panel that comes to our meeting. So we keep this on the council because physical systems are important. Mm-hmm. All of them are important. Can I jump in on what they say? You were actually watching certain demographic comments from the Platinum Center of the Region. That is you are not okay. put in an uncomfortable position. You talk about you're just on that team, and if you want to focus on traffic coming at the particular level, that's I can. Like we're saying, you have a lot of work on that topic. You are not carrying the weight all by yourself, so you don't have to show that. And so as far as physical systems go, have we already, um, I mean, like the copy of the survey, you know, with all the comments, uh, I mean, that's where okay. all of the, the feeding of, of the physical. So, so the, the data of the survey should be released around May 25th. It's a, it's an item I requested, mm-hmm. and I've seen it. And so once that's publicly released in the agenda packet, we'll all have access to it. Mm-hmm. And your packet here is the definition of the physical system and that you can see so this is the topic that essentially the platinum panel is really going to be covering um, with direction from the city council as well and so your role would potentially just be to help us turn that into the comprehensive plan so you would just be giving feedback really and and acting as a citizen um, giving input i mean that's what this entire body is is citizen input you're designated you can Sort of collect information from the community and you're like a funnel to it to us essentially um, yeah. 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 well yeah. don't worry i, I know because he's laid about it <laughs> because he was laid he doesn't get away with it so <laughs> what do you want me to answer that we have essentially only covered the second number on the agenda. Um, Aurora's been discussing the concept of um, partnerships within the Valley, um, the principles of how we implement the, the plan moving forward, the idea that we'll have to balance the citizens' goals with development of resources and establishing goals for that, that there is a component of fiscal responsibility when we're developing these plans to understand that we're not going to bankrupt the city to put in a swimming pool that we have to come up with realistic achievable goals based on the citizens want to accomplish them but you know understanding the confines of our budget and then um, she presented the idea of a focused implementation that essentially you have quarterly to semi-annual reviews um, of the plan by the pnc and in the governing body and that we sort of outline those benchmarks and objectives she went over this table here that gave us a really great visual of like what this could potentially look like. She talked a bit about funding mechanisms and how the city could seek funding and, and through other sources or that how the future development could bring in additional funding for us. But we want to be careful always about um, funding a now project with a promise of later. So that's not, um, we got to be careful about that. And then um, Brandon from K3 has discussed how development in the ETJ can um, present difficult situations with, um, you know, them asking for tax breaks and things like that, and how we have to balance that. 
along those notes, something I read in, in a lot of the forms that Brandon has sent us was the concept of economic muscle, so that anything we consider bringing into the city brings new money to our city versus recirculating old money, so that if we were looking at development in ATJ, we would potentially want to seek businesses that um, produce things to be sold outside of our community or, for example, lodging, tourism, activities that produce goods, like I said, or services distributed outside of the area. Because when we just recirculate our own resources, we're not actually generating new income for our community. But when you bring in economic muscle, is the term they use, it brings new money. So that's a development um, concept of for the future land use and for our fiscal yeah, group. But I would like and that's going to become scary because he has the experience of having him on council when we have the business of the council. And also, what one of the things that in the best of the implementation is regular reporting, giving the responsibility of planning and planning and quarterly the reports and assessments of where the process is. So, what do you think from your, from your basket, your experience, why? This is a question for you. Why, from from 2020, we did not see the whole concept of why we need to be different to achieve the important in our education plan? Well, thank you. Wow, I was tuning in late and I'll cover the world of information. And again, I apologize, uh, Aurora, in, uh, in answer to your question of why. And I'm going to speak from a personal committee member and council member. At the time, we had great issues with the city manager. And I put the blame solely at his feet because the various committees I was on and the council I was on and especially the 2020 plan. I submitted volumes of information to him to pass along to city council. Well, he didn't do any of that. And one of my proudest moments serving the city, fine. And that's one of the things that we need to learn from the past. And when we do an implementation plan, we work further on both and the rest of the implementation. Number one, be realistic. And number two, we need to have mechanisms in place in the plan that fit how the implementation is going to be done. Um, yes, the city manager is the administrator of the city, but planning and training has this responsibility to so the council. And if we don't if we put an implementation schedule, it has to be public. And if the, if the quarterly assessment is that we have designed, then why? Assess, assess, and think the program is necessary. So, that's exactly what happened here. There was, the council was not engaged, did not make, and we need to avoid the that was just an uh, uh, example of this year uh, at the time, not certain, but in, in retrospect, that this year, I think, was quite a fail. So I think it's like We have a great narrative. We have um, done very good work, and we'll see more of it in BBS Nation today. But goals and objectives as a framework. You have to have the goals and objectives defined, approved, and then the implementation plan follows that. So each plan, this Elements which contain at least one goal, 
And it's better if you don't have multiple goals, multiple objectives, be realistic on what can be fulfilled. So you should be, um, so if we have four, we have identified, but we need, we have our natural systems, physical systems, which I call infrastructure. And physical systems which support the physical systems and life. Each plan should be organized in a hierarchy. And it's designed to achieve the desired outcome for the future of this world. I believe, based on what I have read and worked in two previous vision plans, that the hierarchy should be abandoned. Yes. Welcome. Correct. Land use. Is the most critical for the, the future, the physical system, because our infrastructure has been pointed out repeatedly by the citizens as their most critical part. Uh, natural systems and fiscal systems. And the reason I have fiscal systems back is because it supports everything else. Yeah. And I'll just add to that physical systems are also. Construction improvements within that right away will create a part of it. Because, you know, without without that, you get situations like you know, 281 in San Antonio and other places where everything is just funneled onto a main road and then you get back. You know, we have good connectivity requiring developers to dedicate collector streets as other options for traffic. And um, everything just doesn't get dumped in at these major intersections. So, Match the thoroughfare plan. It doesn't have to be some, you know, elaborate huge thing. It just needs to be enough to get the job done and get the job done. Right. Okay. And then very, very quickly, first of all, what is the goal? You all have goals in mind. Is it desired outcome for an enemy? If you have, and I did some examples here, you can have a good So, if you, your goal is to evaluate. What are, your, what are a few for me? For capital improvements and infrastructure throughout the city. And develop a steady budget to address it. We know, we have done that twice already. What is the objective? Is the state of the policy that tells you how you're going to achieve that goal? And you can have more than one objective. One can be, we're going to a great collective voice by 2023, and these are examples that I could. So the second objective is to be that we're going to address the issue of traffic concerns, a volume to the north, to increase safety for this. So, and then the specific, what are the strategies? Those are the actions that we need to take, that we need to take. And it should be specific enough to increase the recommended time frame for implementation, identify the responsible parties, and yes, an estimated cost to price. And I'll just throw it out there for you guys. I know it's kind of it's revolving all for it when it comes to the actual drafting of the document and some of the methodologies in it. But I'll just throw out, uh, in my experience, in my recommendation is to keep it simple. Or if you've got a strategy, and you've got the practice to achieve and so I would just say keep up the strategy and then tackle it. And then. That's, that's what I saw. You know, that's what I saw in the comprehensive plan for several cities where when you go into the key action, mm -hmm. the object, the access, the, 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 uh, the action is what's in there, not the goal. Yeah. And then I did, um, and I did not invent this. Uh, this table is called key actions management. I look at, at the, the, the city of Buda has, their plan is like 200 pages. Uh, <laughs> but um, so ours will not be. But uh, they do have some 
excellent example of how they're going, how they're working on implementation. This is just an example. If you look at what is the objective, okay? So let's say the objective is to upgrade collector votes by 2030. Who is responsible? Based on what I know today, and this may change, it's a platinum panel, the city council, and the citizens, always the citizens. What is the potential cost range? Again, this is hypothetical figure. It should be between six and eight million dollars. What is the need for action? We need to increase these conditions and safety, and what is that And again, this are just hypothetical. So when you are working in your project group, and then when we work together and have the reality set, and this cost range, I understand that some of you are going to say, how am I going to get, what am, how am I going to know the cost? I'm a, I'm a volunteer on this panel. I, how am I going to know the cost? So that's what we're here for, and so is, so is the city staff. So we can, and the fiscal group, uh, the manager, the city manager is in the fiscal group with Mr. Tom and I, we can, we can help you. But there has to be an estimate. And if you look, and this is what is different from vision. In vision, we said, let's do this. We're going to do this and we stay. But did we stay in there? A, who was responsible? Yeah. And keep in mind, your, your plan, your, your South Africa plan doesn't be always have the future. Your South Africa plan can sometimes say, in the next two years, engage in regular people. So that's the problem with you. What are the plans for the next year? And so I would say, you know, instead of the one that you know, a lot of times someone is still planning and what to what plans to get down the road and what plans not to. And so um, this is one of the I'll need to go there to this plan. And this plan needs to establish some of the so I wanted to dive in. Earlier you said keep it simple. So um, I believe a lot of this structure is kind of mirroring the vision plan that we used to have. Mm -hmm. um, and, it, and So I wanted to hear you go in a little bit more about why it might be important mm -hmm. for us to keep it simple or why um, identifying all these strategies, just to sort of balance. Because um, Mayor Putin LeBron generated this document and he had a lot of experience working on the previous vision plan. And so I just kind of want to understand this, like juxtapose on, on like what the comp plan should be doing versus what we've done before. Mm -hmm. yeah. Again, you know, there's lots of different ways to do top of the top. You know, if you did those various on like 300 pages, and each page is probably, you know, $1,000 a piece. I mean, that's, that's an expensive plan. And so there's a lot of different players there. There's people the development sector. I mean, there's tons of people here. You know, personally, you all have a smaller community, so it's a lot more compact. Um, and so I would say, you know, just keep, keep what Who's individual actions simple and not have, you know, I'll be honest, mm -hmm. I see the, I see a gold state and I think, oh, that's yeah. it, it'll never happen. You know, you see strategy, um, that, okay, th we are going to accomplish it. This is why we did this, is to accomplish this strategy. And here's our tactics. Um, and uh, so I, yeah, I just, I wouldn't. I wouldn't yeah. even use the word gold in this whole thing. But. I mean, if you look at the vision plan that, that, that I tell you, what I feel is their weakness, there were too many goals. There were too many objectives. Yeah. If you look at it, they have all these goals, all these objectives, all these strategies. Mm -hmm. When I looked at the comprehensive plans that are coming from other cities, whether they were mega cities or smaller cities like us, most, mostly there is like a major, like you say, yeah. it's simple. Because and that's what I said. One goal, I might be one goal. I mean, natural land use to be 
instead of having all these little spoons that we have in the vision plan, that's what I'm looking at. Yes. Structure of something that is significant, that can do that, and then how it's going to be done. If it's not, it's not. What do you think? I agree. Yeah, agree. Keep, it, keep it to strategies and and, and uh, you know, that's the beauty of this. Going back to Judah, you know, that's a huge city, and they truly are doing a conference as well. Truly a conference of their events and everything that they have from their schools, meetings, you know, we need to fix, you know, we need to fix roads, uh, we need to address new development in the UCA, and, you know, in the, in the last year, those people were concerned about, um, you know, recreation communities and, and trail systems and things like that. Um, so, Y'all have an opportunity to be a more of a strategic plan. More focused, you know, it's going to be less, less of a, a set of policies that you maintain over time and you go back to your business based policies. This can be more of an action. Mm -hmm. We're going to do this in right. the next two years and, and we're putting in here to actually achieve it. And uh, we're going to come up with a plan to fix our roads in the next two years. And we're going to come up with a plan to, you know, speak of joys that take away bad development if we don't want it. So that's, that's a strategic plan. That's a strategic success. Uh, I love the goals. But those ways to act well, maybe aren't the whole thing to do. I think I, I'm glad you, I'm glad for you. We had plans to get the breakdown into our group, but uh, we don't have one of the, like, just the natural just being based on the past in this year. So if uh, maybe what we can do is to, the focus is, I don't know if I have been meeting regularly, but between now and the next meeting, which will be 31st of May, through the weekend, it would be, it would be nice, it would be desirable if we could have, each, and, I, and we can put this back message, each member, each, you know, we don't have to meet in person, but electronic meetings are very effective. Uh, if you could have, Bring back to us the big focus group. What do you think is the, without any influence from us, we want to see your input. Big focus group, what do you think is the most critical or what do you think the plan should address? One hour. Does that make sense? Um, well, uh, yes, it does, and they have those outlines that we were going to pass out. Um, I think we could definitely take 20 minutes, and uh, I think Diane could use a little direction. And I understand natural systems isn't here, but um, land use definitely needs to meet. So even if we do it at the end of the meeting, that's fine. Um, so we could skip this portion and sort of end with that instead of taking it out of the schedule right now. Because uh, we could hand out those handouts to the people that are here and then just make a note to share them with Justin and, and Pat and Jason individually and, and sort of give them a, a little bit more direction at the end of the meeting as to how we move forward since um, we didn't have everyone here. But uh, I think the goal of why we had this breakout session in the middle of the meeting was to try to um, really jump start these focus groups and get some actual things from the on together so when we have it at the end of the meeting everybody just sort of disperses or ends up having side conversations so it was a way to sort of hold us all accountable to actual progress so we might just try to do this next time but at end the meeting on, on the land use at least meeting since we do have any hands with her. One thing struck me here is we have a ten drug or bicycle person. Okay. 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 
So are those are those defined like as in Wood Creek or um, so uh, collect informal. I moved back and I was getting the evil eye here from the sound of this world to the night. So so, so anyhow, let's go move. So, so uh, Diane asked what collector roads are, and so I just was going to take a brief moment to describe the concept. Um, collector roads is an industry-specific term, but what it's talking about in regards to our neighborhood would be roads like Wood Creek Drive or even potentially Augusta and Brook Meadow, because the concept is that these roads collect vehicles from all the offshoots and send them either out or into our city. Um, so that, that is it. You could also call, some people call them cut through roads or major roads or uh, main streets. Yeah, there's a lot of terms, but I think the block is a really good idea. Yeah. Um, and so we can work on that. And then I think what this committee could do because um, we need y'all is um, when a bird doesn't make sense, raise your hand yes. and that will okay. help us because as just, you know, lay people in this, um, y'all will help us identify where we're kind of you know, making people's eyes blaze open. We've spent so many hours working on this that these terms have become common for us now. Um, but well, a, a city that I used to live in actually had the, uh, the, the roads identified, you know, very specifically. So, uh, like, you could look up in the city, like, you may not want to live on a cliff or not. So, um, I mean, maybe that could be part of it, too, is to define what we see as collector roads. Some of that work has been done. Yeah, it's just distribution of information is always a problem. Something I grew up to. Um, I don't know what the, the math would take away to but let me something else we could do is maybe have them do something that's specific to focus group. Maybe those are in the focus group and be led by now and into the details of what you select to get the lane into the area. It's just a physical group of the I used to walk with my dogs, and one of the things that I learned to do was not to walk around with people. So use the focus out. And it is, it is, uh, it is, uh, and I know uh, this is an advertisement uh, for the. Uh, May 25th meeting council, so that you're going to attend. Um, I think that uh, 
you're going to see some initiatives that you know, kind of you need to also look at them from the comprehensive plan perspective. The U.S. Department of Transportation is very active for uh, publishing opportunities for grants, and one of the ones that's really caught my eye is the grant that's focusing on real areas and safety, and uh, safety in real areas both, as well as um, pedestrian access. So I think that those are things that we need to look at for your, for your funding. Right, and, and um, Megan, along the way, you know, the tech support from our bike, they they give out dinners, matching dinners every single year, including the National Park. The Peoria Parks and Recreation Master Plan, they have a pretty complex data how they grade that on, so definitely it's great to have sidewalks on the streets. So as you can see, you guys have got some extensive space doing that, so a box and everything there. So it, it's not impossible, that's just going to be a little bit of threading and needle, I think, we can, we can design it. Um, but there's a balance. You can put sidewalks on the street, you can put sidewalks off the street, there's mm -hmm. alternative walking trails, and depending on how you design your sidewalks and where you are, whether they're on the street or off the street, um, you, know, you may be able to qualify a fishing trail for the park and wildlife for walking trails. So again, you know, just kind of, you know, guide discussion, you know, and specific to address the topic of plan or whether the topic of plan is so come up with a trails map. Mm -hmm. um, come up with a roadway improvement topic. Sidewalks into the roadway to prioritize that. So, you know, that's that would be important to get doctors to know that definitely set strategies and action to say, right. but it also set policy for this council, this community, this district, future health, future DMP, um, how to implement future code into the system. And I'm glad you mentioned that because it is often said that the actions of one council cannot bind future council, but on the comprehensive plan, it is. You know, a future council can always change the topics of master plan, but not without lengthy discussion that requires citizens to know, hey, this council is saying we need to start waiving sidewalks for developers. Why? <laughs> so um, I'm going to shoot us through the last four items. I can see everyone's getting a little restless, and I know we're using um, people's time who need to get to work. So um, let's get through four through seven and then we can do a, the breakout as is intended and future land use can at least meet and then um, we can answer any individual questions since the formal meeting has gone off so if you look at number four or you can also look at the screen there i have it pulled up for you all it says discuss and take appropriate action on formatting pages for the comprehensive plan um, previously in the in the last meeting we discussed the concept of we want to change the format of our plan from just like a, a very basic word document with outlines to something with a little bit more substance and a little bit more art to it. The original design presented at that meeting was a horizontal design. Uh, Lydia has proposed this here uh, with her design software that she had. Um, so right now today what we would be voting on is we want to go to a design like this. And we can say, do we want it horizontal or vertical? Um, and she's provided us several examples here of what it would look like. There's the vision statement, the background. She still has it vertical here, um, but we would need to decide today. Do we want to go vertical, horizontal, or do we want to move towards something like this with more graphic and design elements? Or do we want to so this is an item that we would be voting on, and we can vote on each question in particular. I was just going to give you all a few minutes to look at these pages and look at the, the possibility. And if you need me to, I can pull up the previous example where it was vertical, uh, or sorry, horizontally laid out uh, versus this vertical moment. So the first question I'd like us to answer is, do we want to go towards something like this with more graphic design elements, or do we want to stick with our very basic word document? Y'all have any discussion on this one? With the graphics. So let's go. Anyone else?
So, okay. so I guess we'll go ahead and pull for those um, offers like I said, I believe she would tell me the most so we'll let you all vote. Um, the vote is on to keep a simple Microsoft Word document format or to go towards something like Lydia Design here with more graphic design. So uh, I guess we'll just say graphic or basic. Graphic. Not to be confused with other things. Uh, now, not explicit, right? Yes, we're keeping this family oriented. All right, so the next question would be do we like the vertical format or do we like that horizontal format? I can bring up Judah's um, example if y'all would like. Uh, they just, um, the, it seems to me to be that the benefit of the horizontal, if I was advocating for it, which I'm not, I'm just advocating for both, is that the horizontal seems to put less words and more design on a page, and, and also then all allows you to put more graphics on the page, is what I noticed is the big difference between the two. The benefit to the vertical, in my opinion, seems to be that the eye sort of naturally is the key to do that in that way, so it kind of creates a, a more sequential sort of room for um, but I think we need to decide which way we're going to go because then um, Lydia is going to start putting the sections that we finalize into the format for us. Um, so here's an example. In your packet, you have vertical. If you look at the screen, here are some examples of what horizontal is looking like. See this one picture on the side and the text on the right. There just seems to be more flexibility in it. See their table of contents. Um, I don't know why they have one page. But you know, here's their acknowledgement page, um, their overview. Let's try to get see. You can see there's just a lot more design options. I feel like in the horizontal, but maybe that's cluttered. Maybe that's that's too much. You know, I think they would definitely mean that we have to produce a lot more photos or graphics if we were to go this route. But this is what I personally like about it. Just how how big you can make your own and then how you can structure it so that it be less work. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay. Ours is still square, so we could probably do either. I guess. Huh. Okay. So um, that's what the horizontal looks like, right? And so then we have this excellent example of the idea of like what vertical would look like more. I would probably request that she separate vision statements from background because I feel like having those headers headers on the side like that, two of them in a row is a little awkward. That there yeah, I would probably break those up. And we can still do that vertical. Um, so I, I mean I'm not really advocating for either one, I'm just expressing the benefits I see. The vertical is a little bit more traditional, it's a little easier in my mind. To follow visually, but I think the limitations are the putting the graphics on the page is a little harder. You can't so, get them side by side, so like the formatting someone to plan that. So, which one is more systematic? I'm guessing Lydia went with this. Article. I 
will convey that information to Lydia again. We'll probably hold off on doing too much more design work until we finish more of the filming. Um, the next item in item five is a discussion of appropriate action on technology. In the last session, we discussed having technology change. Everybody seems very much on board for the concept. We expressed a lot of positive feedback before. Lydia went ahead and created one for us. Um, we can talk about this specific case right now and the way the people who are mentioned on it seem to have any concerns about it. Um, and then the case that we were taking a vote on has the answer now. Last time we basically all said, oh, yeah, we like the idea, but we were not allowed to use that. So it was they got through. Um, so if there's a ticket section. Yeah, so that, I was giving a minute for everyone to speak, but my concern with this page was, um, for example, when the comp plan process started, uh, we had a different there. So I would like to just list folks. I don't need to work on that, but like, you know, there was different people in the funding zoning who approved the survey results. Um, you know, in the city administration alone, Linda Lynn So isn't the city inspector, but you know, he's on this and I don't necessarily want to take him off, but I just need to discuss a few things. The names that end up on here, what body are we going with? Depending on when we finally get this done, um, we might even have another city council. What happens to the number of So what do we want to do? have to have the right to present this information and so um, we need to be very careful about just pulling images off the internet again since these are all um, samples for us right now we can work on it uh, but in the final plan we'll need to make sure that all graphs and the right to do for a thought submission or have um, your Yeah. 
that's a question I have. I don't know. Okay, just show up for the first meeting. Eventually, it's like a yeah. It looks like that there's one schedule. So I can't make that. You don't have to. And Aurora is the liaison for that group, so she will be able to really um, help us out here. Yeah, so it looks like the Tree Board Platinum Panel and Ordinance Review Committee are all scheduled to meet May 24th. It's probably just their initial meeting. Uh, I don't know how much we dealt with. Uh, okay, so moving on to the next meeting, we discussed to take appropriate action on how we can the last meeting I alluded to the concept of in many of the plans that I've read, they have um, this sort of recap of what happens when you create this plan. And so far we have not really discussed having one of these pages. I did see plans without it. It's not a necessary component. As we talked about with like the acknowledgement page, sometimes the benefit to something like this is it sort of gives, it's like a, a permit history encapsulated there so that every time we have a new council or new mayor or whatever, that person can read this page briefly and catch themselves up versus So it might be good in there while we test that it's not going to be in the vision.
are addressing the major population change. Um, yeah, we're going to wrap up the meeting and then um, future land use will hopefully meet for just a little bit. And then if you have documents like that, you can fill them up. We'll have to put them in the next meeting. Um, all right. So, are there any more discussions on the how this plan was created? So, not one more. So, how do you like that? Yeah. Bill mentioned the first minute, but uh, I just got to say, I think it's great because, I mean, honestly, a lot of work occurred just before we got into the engagement. And I think, you know, thank that. Yeah. I don't think that's just the. Okay. Maybe you just leave off this time. Of 
do a brief summary. And if you, if you can, if you're working on people, 